What's going on friends? Welcome back to another video. We are doing a day in the life today. I am up this morning making my animals all of their breakfast. So we've got some turkey and sweet potatoes. Here's the cat serving and the dogs is still making or still on the stove with some oatmeal. So that's always like the first thing that I have to do in the morning. I'm drinking my coffee while I wait for this to cook. And then I'm gonna take care of the animals, get myself dressed. And I think that we're gonna try to get out and run some errands today. It's supposed to rain. It's been super rainy all week, hence why my voice sounds like this. The weather is ever changing in Texas and doing whatever it wants to. Now that we're in May, it seems like it's February or March. So hopefully it starts warming up here soon. But since it's raining, I'm kind of on the fence if I'm gonna get out of the house or not, but it's been all week. All the animals are mad because they're ready to eat. Um, but since it's been like rainy and yucky all week, we haven't done too much outside of the house, but I'm kind of like getting that ick of being inside and I'm ready to get out and go do something. So if I do, I will take you guys along. I do have some other things to get done around the house. So I will show you those things too, as well as what our homeschooling is going to look like for the day. Um, tomorrow is Friday, so I'm going to try to wrap up everything that we have set out for this week so that we can just chill tomorrow. It's not supposed to rain tomorrow, so I'm hoping that we can go like to the park or something before it gets too, too hot. So we'll just see how that all goes, but let's get into the video for today. Okay, I'm in the office and I'm getting ready to do our weekly like reset. So in one of my last videos, I kind of did like a real quick get it done with me. My hair is sticking to me because it's so humid here. Um, in one of my last videos, I did like a quick get it done with me before we moved on like to a new unit. But I've been doing like all kinds of random stuff in the office this week. And so it's a mess. Like I have um, the hot glue gun on the floor and just all kinds of stuff out. And then I had something fall off the wall in that video that I was talking about. Um, so I've just kind of gotten some inspiration to move some things around in the house. So y'all know how that goes, but I need to take care of those type of things that wasn't really on my to-do list, but I walked in here to get stuff ready for next week and then it's just that led me here. So here we are. Um, I'm going to go ahead and include that in case you like those kinds of things. So let's just get started, I guess. schooling for the day let me mute the TV I wanted to tell you guys how we've been tackling like our reading practice in case this might offer a little bit of inspiration I always see moms asking about like where their kids should be or what they should be doing to encourage their like independent reading so my son is very capable of reading independently but his willingness to do so is always non-existent so he never really wants to take the time to read something or to even admit that he is an independent reader now so that he can kind of weasel his way out of it and i always say this with transparency i'm not trying to just dog my son out here but i want you to know that this is the case for other families too and when i was a kindergarten teacher i would always see that same thing where when it comes to like silent reading time or independent reading time whatever you may call it you will always have some kids that are just like, oh my gosh, I could be thinking about or doing so many other things. So that's what my mind is like ticking away on and they're not really focused on what they're reading. So I always reiterate to my son that reading is going to be a skill that he has to carry for the rest of his life. And if he doesn't enjoy it, it's going to make a lot of other things not as enjoyable to learn about 
or to you know research on things that he is interested in and so I think that that was finally a shift that he had to make in his own mind and then we have been practicing every day for whatever the given amount of time is. So my suggestion to you would be start small at a time that's going to make them feel successful. So I would not shoot for like 30 minutes, go read for 30 minutes or whatever. So start small, give them a manageable, a manageable amount of time to go and choose a book that they can look at and tell the story to themselves. So that's where we started and then build up to simple short stories that have easy to um, decode words in there so like very simple words such as the a in all of those high frequency words and then you can start shifting to stories that are a little more difficult so depending on where they are from here on out it's going to just be up to you and up to your learner but I would suggest start with a manageable time and then work up from there so every week um, every two weeks, even if it's something that you're really seeing they need to build their confidence in. So once they have that confidence, then they're just gonna wanna keep doing it and keep challenging themselves. And now my son has like finally broken through that point where he's like, oh, I can read that. Oh, I wanna go read this book. Or can we check this out? Can you buy this Minecraft book? Da, 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 da. So now I'm finally seeing like the shift in his willingness and excitement to read because he's now built that, that um, confidence and accountability in himself through those practices. So by setting them up, you know, and having confidence in them, then they start to kind of wonder, well, where is that confidence coming from, from my parent? Now you can create those habits and build that anticipation for what's to come in their learning. Okay, this just reminded me to come in my son's room because I want to show you two separate level one books, but these are by two different brands. So in this Lego book, it has like repeating words, that go along with the story and you see these are like pretty simple sentences. The pictures are very helpful to what's going on, but for the most part, this is pretty easy. I'm trying to do this with one hand, I'm sorry. Um, this is pretty easy to decipher. And now in this other one that's also supposed to be a level one, you'll see that the sentences are a little bit longer and I've noticed that there aren't as many repeating words as there are in that other book. And so the font is bigger, which I definitely like, but there are some things that, you know, it's just differences. So just be aware of that when you are looking at or comparing books as you're checking them out for your kid's level. Just know that sometimes it is going to vary. So you just need to be observant of what they're capable of doing and not so much like the level or what it's deemed on because we want them to be successful. We don't want to, them to feel like they have to meet expectations that aren't really there. So just something to keep in mind and I wanted to show you a realistic example. Anyway, so that's what we have gotten done today. Um, my husband just left with my son. They went down to the park to hang out with their little park crew and I'm just here chilling with the animals. I have to feed all of them in a second. So I have their lunch on the stove right now. That's my like next checkpoint for the day. And then I believe my husband said we're gonna go out and run some errands and then grab some dinner while we're out. So okay, if you have not played Yahtzee, especially with your kids, this has become one of our newest late night activities before bed um, and I love it because I let my son keep score so that he can practice his math skills secretly but we are also competitive it's really become one of our favorites but like I said I can sneak in those little math practice skills or whatever and now it's something that we all don't mind playing or pulling out like if we're looking for something to do other than watch TV or you know have a screen so think of ways that you can like incorporate little games or even playing cards is great for your child's like planning and anticipation of what's gonna happen so that they can you know have the advantage but it's also just super enjoyable and to be able to spend time doing something that's beneficial for their learning and also like family time you can't beat that. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video here. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed, be sure to do so, and I will see you in the next one.